Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Forbes. I'm an associate professor at Brandon University in the Department of Physical Education. I'm also a clinical exercise physiologist through our Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology and a sport nutritionist through the International Society of Sport Nutrition. I'm very happy to be presenting alongside so many phenomenal speakers. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present on creatine. Today's presentation is going to be on creatine combined with resistance training as a preventative strategy for sarcopenia. So first, I'm just going to talk about some of the negative consequences of aging and spe specifically the musculoskeletal consequences. On the left-hand side, you can see a cross-sectional image of the mid-thigh of a younger individual. And on the right-hand side, a cross-sectional image of the mid-thigh of an older individual. So first, you can see the femur or the bone in the upper thigh. And you can see in the younger individual that there's a lot of bone mineral density. In the older individual, you tend to lose bone mineral density and the bone shape also changes and that has implications on bone strength. You can see the yellow tissue in the younger individual here is uh, quite a, a lot. There's a large quantity of that yellow tissue and that's important because that's your muscle tissue. In, a young, or in an older population, you tend to lose that muscle tissue and that has implications for losing muscle strength and also functionality. And you could also see the uh, subcutaneous adipose tissue is uh, quite small in a younger individual and it increases with age. So an older individual is going to have more fat mass, subcutaneous adipose tissue, less amount of uh, bone mineral density, but also less amount of muscle mass, which has implications for reducing muscle strength and also functionality. So the age-related loss in muscle mass, strength, and functionality is called sarcopenia. This actually occurs in about 8 to 30% of adults over the age of 60. And with an increase in age, this number will begin to rise. So we also know that after the age of 40, you start to lose muscle at about 1% per year. But importantly, you also start to lose muscle strength. And actually, the decreases in strength occur at about 2 to 5 times faster than the reduction in muscle. Again, this has really important implications because muscular strength is actually a, a stronger predictor of independence and healthy aging. And so we need to preserve our strength and our muscle mass as we age. And so the best way to do that is with resistance training. Resistance exercise or mechanical tension in the muscle is really the best strategy, the most potent strategy to either prevent or manage sarcopenia. And some really good evidence that came out recently showed lifelong strength training is really important to preserve those fast twitch muscle fibers. So in the bottom right, you can see a control. So this is an older individual and the blue represents type one muscle fibers and the red represents type two muscle fibers. So you can see in a sedentary older individual they tend to lose those type two or those fast twitch muscle fibers. In the bottom left, um, you can see an older endurance athlete. Um, so again, they preserve a little bit of those fast twitch fibers, but they have a lot of blue. So there's a lot of type one or oxidative muscle fibers. In the top left, you actually see a younger individual here. So you see a lot of type one and type two muscle fibers. So a nice distribution. In the uh, top right, you actually see uh, an individual that's performed strength training throughout their entire life. And you see that they're able to preserve a lot of those fast twitch muscle fibers, even in later stages of life or an aging population. So this really shows the benefits of, of strength training throughout your entire lifespan to help preserve those fast twitch muscle fibers that are important for falls prevention. And this was a nice article that was led by uh, uh, Dr. Stu Phillips, a Canadian researcher from McMaster University, alongside other uh, collaborators, including Eric Rawson from Messiah College in the United States. 
And they basically looked at kind of the health implications of resistance exercise. So resistance exercise is not only important for increasing muscle mass or strength or maintaining those fast switch fibers, it also has implications for a variety of other uh, prevention strategies for different chronic diseases. And so this is a, a nice kind of uh, summary article to look at reducing the risk or the hazard ratio of several different chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. Of course, uh, combining resistance training with aerobic training is probably the best, but it definitely shows some benefits of just resistance training alone. So again, resistance training seems to be this uh, foundational exercise that's really important for health, particularly in an older population. So how can we um, improve these uh, resistance training adaptations? One strategy is combining resistance training with creatine. So creatine's actually derived of three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine, which can be put together in your liver and kidney, also in your brain as well, but your body can endogenously create creatine. Once creatine is in the bloodstream, about 95% of creatine is taken up into the muscle. Two thirds of that is converted into phosphocreatine and phosphocreatine can be broken down rapidly to create ATP. And ATP is the energy currency within the muscle. Creatine is also non-enzymatically degraded to, or broken down to creatinine as well. So we lose about two grams of, of creatine day. So we need to replace that. And obviously we can synthesize creatine within our body, but this is at a limited capacity. It can maybe only uh, synthesize about one gram of creatine per day. But we can also get creatine from food sources. And so uh, if you look at the different food sources here that contain a high amount of, of creatine, you'll see that they're mostly animal-based, or they're all animal-based. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're actually not going to be consuming these foods. Importantly, uh, even if you are an omnivore and you eat these, uh, these types of foods, um, it's actually very difficult to get a, a high amount of creatine from these food sources alone. So a typical kind of uh, creatine supplementation protocol provides five grams of creatine per day. And if you want to do this with food sources alone and not take a supplement, you'd have to consume about 3.57 pounds of cod per day. Maybe you like beef, it'd be 3.33 pounds of beef per day, about 200 cups of milk, 2.5 pounds of salmon, or uh, 2.78 pounds of tuna per day. So you can see that it's very, very difficult to get a lot of creatine from food sources alone. And so this is why uh, vegetarians or vegans actually have lower amounts of creatine within their muscles. It might be at about 60 or 70% saturation. If you're an omnivore, you might be at about 80% saturation. If you take a creatine supplement, you can saturate your muscles in a variety of different uh, dosing strategies. So the most common one is taking 20 grams per day that's split into four doses throughout the day. And you do this for seven days and this is gonna saturate your muscles with creatine. You can also take three grams of creatine per day for 28 days. That will also saturate your muscles. So it will take a little bit longer with that lower dose compared to the traditional kind of loading phase. Or you can try this uh, relative dosing strategy, which is commonly used in my laboratory or uh, some of my collaborators, including Dr. Darren Kando or Phil Chilebeck, we use this dosing strategy, and this is based off of uh, a relative dosing strategy based off your body weight. So you take 0 0.1 grams per kilogram per day. We've shown this strategy to be very effective in older adults, um, not only to enhance muscle performance, but also for bone health as well. So how does creatine actually work? Um, it's a multifactorial uh, process that creatine can actually enhance muscle performance and muscle health. 
So first, creatine can increase the amount of phosphocreatine within the muscle, and this is basically an energy source. If you combine creatine with carbohydrates, you can actually get more glycogen in the muscle as well. So again, those are fuels within the muscle and can increase exercise capacity, basically allow you to train a little bit harder. If you train a little bit harder, you can get bigger and stronger muscles over time. But creatine is, is pleiotropic or multifactorial, and it could also prevent reactive oxygen species. It seems to do this by helping transport ATP from the mitochondria to uh, sites of utilization. Creatine can also increase IGF-1, which has a cascade of a uh, cascade response, ultimately leading to an increase in mTOR protein translation and an increase in muscle hypertrophy. Creatine can also stimulate uh, myogenic regulatory factors, increasing satellite cells, which are going to increase the amount of nuclei and increase the capacity for the muscle to grow. There's also some animal evidence to show that creatine can inhibit myostatin, which is trying to block muscle growth. So overall, creatine can increase anabolic processes, although creatine has not been shown to directly increase uh, mTOR activity. Um, there is also some evidence that creatine can decrease muscle catabolic processes, including muscle protein breakdown, it could decrease inflammation and it could decrease oxidative stress. So if you combine creatine with resistance training, you can get some bigger and stronger muscles. So this was in healthy older adults. We looked at all the studies that have ever been published. We found 16 randomized controlled trials that, that uh, evaluated whether creatine combined with resistance training um, had any influence over a placebo plus resistance training. In total, uh, 509 participants were included in these 16 randomized controlled trials, and the individuals were over the age of 50. And what we found was that when we combined all these studies together, we found that creatine is an effective supplement combined with resistance training to increase lean tissue mass. So lean tissue mass includes muscle, but also includes other, um, uh, other things as well, including water. Um, and uh, we found that if they took creatine, they gained about 1.32 kilograms more lean tissue mass compared to placebo. And this led to also increases in upper body strength. Um, again, favoring creatine compared to placebo and lower body strength. And this has really important implications because lower body strength is important for uh, stability, posture, and locomotion. But as I mentioned, some of that gains in lean tissue mass could be associated with water retention. And so in this particular study, we wanted to look at more direct measures of muscle hypertrophy. We wanted to also look at regional measures. So whether it influenced, you know, upper body differently than lower body. And so this particular review or systematic review that was conducted alongside uh, Dr. Darren Kanda, but also led uh, by Brad Schoenfeld, actually found that creatine significantly improved uh, lean tissue mass, so there's regional measures of, of muscle hypertrophy um, equally. So the upper elbow flexors, elbow extensors, or the lower uh, knee flexors, knee extensors, were, had a similar response to creatine combined with resistance training. So creatine is an effective supplement to enhance muscles throughout the entire body. We also did a sub-analysis and we found that uh, younger individuals tended to respond a little bit better compared to an older population. However, the older population did respond favorably to the creatine supplementation. And importantly, uh, creatine actually improves functionality. So we actually found uh, in the studies that utilize creatine, they improve their sit-to-stand performance. So going from a seated position to a standing position, they were able to do this better with creatine. 
And this has really important implications for an older population because sit to stand performance is important as a predictor of falls risk. So if you perform sit to stand better, you're less likely to fall. So again, this shows kind of the functionality and the functional improvements of creatine supplementation in an older population. So what about sarcopenia? Um, this has been less studied, but I'm gonna highlight one particular study where we included both non-sarcopenic and sarcopenic individuals. And in this particular study, we actually were looking at creatine supplementation timing as well. So we had 39 uh, individuals in the study and we had both males and females and they ranged in age between 50 and 71 years. They were untrained at the beginning of the study and we had three different groups. So one group just received a placebo, maltodextrin or a sugar. One group received creatine before training. The other group received creatine after training. They trained three times per week for 32 weeks. And what we found was that uh, creatine actually increased their leg press strength. So again, this has really important clinical implications in an older population. If they can improve their lower body strength, that can help them with movement or functionality, but also perhaps uh, by reducing their, their chances of falling. So both creatine before training and after training uh, were both effective compared to placebo at improving their lower body strength. If you look at changes in muscle mass, only creatine after training was superior compared to placebo. Um, however, there is no differences between creatine before training and creatine after training with regards to changes in lean tissue mass. So overall, compared with resistance training alone, creatine supplementation improved muscle strength, leg press strength, with greater gains in lean tissue mass resulting from post-exercise creatine supplementation. Importantly, in this study, there was actually nine individuals that had sarcopenia. And what we found was after the training, only three individuals had sarcopenia. And what we concluded was that resistance training with and without creatine actually treated sarcopenia and completely reversed it. So resistance training, again, is kind of the foundation. It's the most important thing that you can do. And we recently wrote a nice uh, article, review article, narrative review, um, again, alongside Dr. Darren Kando, Ben Kirk, and uh, Gustavo, um, looking at kind of the evidence of the potential of creatine to actually augment resistance training adaptation and perhaps prevent sarcopenia. Um, Darren Kando has done a lot of work with Bill Chilebeck to show that creatine combined with resistance training can actually improve uh, bone strength, particularly in postmenopausal females. We've also shown that creatine combined with resistance training can decrease body fat as well. And potentially, uh, this would be a, a great strategy to prevent sarcopenia and to prevent frailty and disease later in life. So just in summary, um, there's lots of evidence in non-sarcopenic older adults that combining creatine with resistance training is, is an effective strategy to enhance muscle mass, mus muscular strength, and functionality. I would like to note that there's limited data in individuals with sarcopenia, um, thus uh, future research is warranted. So if we look at this from uh, a nice figure that was created from one of Stu Phillips' uh, reviews, um, basically they looked at if you resistance train, you can increase the amount of muscle mass that you have earlier in life, and that could enhance kind of health span later in life. And what we know is that creatine can augment these adaptations so you can get bigger and stronger muscles, uh, again, in healthy, older individuals. 
whether that has implications for delaying sarcopenia or preventing that, uh, that loss of muscle mass and strength to such a degree where you have some sort of disability or dependence um, is, is yet to be seen. But in theory, this is going to be a, a very effective strategy. So this is our kind of thought process is that if you can make your, your muscles bigger and stronger earlier in life here with the addition of creatine supplementation, then it's going to delay kind of that, uh, that time it takes to before you start to uh, get into these years where you have disability and dependence. So in theory, creatine supplementation combined with resistance training could be a great strategy to prevent sarcopenia or at least delay sarcopenia. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you'd like to email me, you can email me at forbess at brandonu.ca. Or if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at scott underscore forbes underscore PhD. Thanks.